Uh, the topic obviously is social, social media as a marketing and an engagement tool for government. And, and what we want to really talk about is how this applies to India, how were Mr. Modi and the BJP able to use social media to win, what are they doing with it now, and in a country that's about to surpass China in terms of population, what can social and social media become to make the world's biggest democracy a better democracy? These are big questions, but we've got some big thinkers on the stage to help us come up with some answers. So I'm going to ask each of these gentlemen to introduce himself and to tell you who he's with, and I'll start with the gentleman to my right. Go ahead. Uh, Namaskar, everybody. My name is Vineet Goenka, and I represent Bharatiya Janata Party. I lead the e-governance and the policies sector, apart from the social media there. Okay. Uh, my name is Karthik Shrinivasan. I head the social media practice for Ogilvy and Mehta in India. Hi, my name is Jitendra Meglani, and I serve as a senior forecast analyst at Forrester Research. I develop social media forecast uh, for uh, social media advertising spending as well as the social media user adoption uh, across the globe in US, in Europe, in Asia Pacific. Uh, so I'm here. Okay, can everybody hear him? Uh, is your microphone on? Speak into it again. Hello? Yep. Okay. And yours? Hello. Kartik? Is it audible? Yep. 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 Okay. So what is, let, let's talk a little bit about marketing because, you know, we're mixing the term of social media and marketing. They get mixed up a lot when we're talking about politics right now. Um, what is marketing when we're talking about politics in India? What does that mean? What does the BJP say about that? Okay, I'm the first victim. Yes, you are. See, uh, a political party never has anything called as marketing because there is nothing which is to be sold. It's more about involvement. Nothing to be sold. sold. No yeah. ideas to be sold. No, there is nothing to be sold. In Indian contest, selling in a political party is seen as to be taboo. Rather, there is something called as involvement. Involvement. And the engagement. And we thought that previous to 2012, political parties used to think in silo and impose their thinking and ideologies to people. Whereas we migrated from the silo thinking to something called as collective thinking, collective wisdom. And we thought social media can be an appropriate tool where you can use the marketing tools to crowdsource ideas. And that's how it all started. And then I think it was known, so I did not uh, repeat what is known to people, that we started communicating, ideating, talking about it. So it's not about selling, it's more about involving people. Kartik, what do you say? Is I mean, so, is that true? You know, uh, coming from Europe, coming from the United States, everyone says that politicians and parties are always about selling an idea. Yeah. Uh, so the thing is, a classic example, I mean, or a classic definition of a word sell is that you give something and take something back. Right. That's the definition. But I would still use the word sell in a not give and take, but you're still selling or conveying an ideology on behalf of a person or a party, and you're using as many tools as possible to do that. Earlier, you didn't have social media kind of tools, you just had print media and broadcast media, which is one-way communication, which helped in selling only, I mean, so when I use the word sell, it is a classic convey a meaning to the person or a group of people kind of meaning, not buy and sell kind of stuff. But, but there still is a tran transaction, I mean, I, there is a transaction, uh, let's there not, is most definitely a transaction. Right, because I'm, uh, you know, the BJP is selling a platform and in return wants your vote. Yep. So there is a transaction taking place. So yes, there is a transaction. So for instance, if I say that I love Levi's, it means that brand Levi's tells you saying, Karthik, please love Levi's. And I say, yes, I love Levi's. That is where the transaction ends from a political party point of view. But for Levi's, it means Levi's says, okay, if you love Levi's, please walk into a store and pay money and buy it too. Right. That is the next one. That is probably the vote process where you need to actually show your love in a meaningful way within a democratic setup, saying I vote for this person, vote for this party. That is the equivalent of paying the money. But it's not the money part, it's actually with your trust that you're paying that. Okay. Eventually. Jitinder? Yeah. So for me, uh, marketing and engagement are two different things which we are discussing in this session. Marketing is about uh, reaching out to your target consumer segments through several channels. It may be offline or online. Offline you have television, radio, newspapers, magazines, and online you have paid search 
dis uh, online display, social media. So these are all channels to reach out to your target customer segments. Whereas engagement is kind of a two-way process, whereby uh, you are uh, engaging with your target customer segments to seek input from them as well and to engage with them in a dialogue with them on an ongoing basis. So these are two t different things and uh, in politics, in business we have uh, the objective is that we have to grow the revenues, that's why we do the marketing. In politics, we have two scenarios, there is a pre-poll scenario and there is a post-poll scenario. In a pre-poll scenario, I would say that the objective is that you have to win the election. You have to prepare, get 272 seats, that's it. And in a post-poll scenario, the objective of the marketing in the political world is that you have to get uh, the good work which your government is doing in front of your citizens so, uh, so that you can prepare for the next elections, mm -hmm. so that uh, they buy your story. So, so pre-poll and post-poll, we have different objectives in marketing in the political world. How important was it um, for the BJP to use social media in the last election compared to traditional media, which is uh, you know, broadcast mass media? So you'll have to understand this scene here. Uh, we had a party which was in government for last 10 years, and uh, that party was there, is there for last 120 years versus my party, which is very young, 25 years old party, and we were not in government. So A, we had to send, change the pyramid of thinking, the mindset of thinking. In Indian contest, the thinking process of voting happens from grandfather to the father to the youth. We had to upset this April card and we changed it and we wanted the youth to take the decision, influence his father and his grandfather. So and this transition, where which so what we did is, we thought, okay, why not reverse the entire pyramid, the apple cart. And we upset the apple cart by using this tool, whereby we made the youth so much empowered, okay, he started taking the calls, in turn he influenced his father, and who in turn influenced his grandfather. And so you could see that families migrated their loyalties of votes from A party or B party to BGP. That was the do you, do you have data to support that? that younger voters were actually influencing the, the, the votes of older voters? Yeah, of course. The total number of votes which we got is almost around 33 crore people, which is unprecedented in India or across anywhere in the globe. My party membership bounced from 19 lakhs, which is 1.9 million, to somewhere around 2.2 crores, which is almost around 22 million. Mm -hmm. Now this jump, and then we were doing this data analysis. So what you do basically is, uh, we use social media for two things. We were just discussing before this session is that to decimate the ideas and estimate the ideas. So we were decimating party policies, ideologies, issues of the government and trying to collect reactions on that. We use big data, the data analytics to understand what the youth wanted. In 2008-2012 period, if you see these four years, much before the elections, Social media was only used by people in the bra uh, bracket of 16 to 36. Mm -hmm. So they were younger crowd. They had future to see. So what we did is we tried to data analyze that. What was their demand? What were their agonies, their problems, their challenges? What were their expectations from a political party? So in 2012, when we started the Operation 7i, under that 7i, uh, we started talking what the youth wanted. And there you see this uh, paradigm shifted, the transition shifted. Uh, the focus shifted from grandpa to the youth uh, who started influencing the decision within the family about a political ideology. Mm -hmm. So that there, the data was the key. Let me, let me ask people in the audience, um, obviously, let me ask just by a show of hands, how many of you are Indians and voted in the last election? All right, so we have a majority here. How many of you agree with what we're hearing here that social media changed the influence and that it went from grandpa down from young up. Okay, so we're all on the same page there. I will add here, Yeah. and this is what I feel we did good to the democracy. Uh, thank God we won, we won uh, with fantastic majority and numbers in the house as well as the numbers. In India, uh, there are two things. We have to win the number of seats, the constituencies, not the number of votes. But number of votes also tells you how much you have been liked by people or you have been rejected by people. What makes us more happier than coming to the power is that there are many people in this room and outside this room who voted for the first time, whether they voted for me or they voted against me. So there are people who would have voted against me. I'm happy that they voted because they could actually start believing in the 
participation of democracy, which is very strong. We, you know, I, I helped, I covered the election too, and, and what struck me, and I, I think a lot of journalists around the world, when they looked at this election, they got the impression, especially looking at Mr. Modi, is that this was not a parliamentary democracy anymore, but suddenly, <laughs> thanks to social media, India had become a presidential democracy. And I even saw some journalists slipping and saying, well, the Indians have voted for President, I mean, Prime Minister Modi, <laughs> because it felt like, almost like an Obama, Barack Obama feeling in the country. Did, did you guys do that on purpose? No, let me confess here, and I have people who have worked I mean, with they're me. they're smiling. So, they, so, so. Uh, see what happens, you know, we come from a Sanatan background. Uh, Sanatan is the oriental kind of thinking, if you say the Sintithal thinking. So we do believe in incarcations and others, and we also believe in strong personalities. Uh, unfortunately, this is not the right platform, but as you have raised this question, I will say, okay, we were facing a challenge of decision making in the last decade of the governance. And there was a term which came up, said policy paralysis. Policy was paralysis, yes. And as a country, we were facing a lot. People were not worried about common things, but we were, they were worried about what was going in the governance. And here we needed somebody who has a strong personality. What I mean by strong personality is a person who can decide. The decisions can be right, not so right. But people wanted that somebody decide and tells me that what is good for this country. And we start acting there. We are a fantastic uh, country. We are one-sixth of the human beings. Uh, we have all what is there where Mother Earth has. You have water, you have snow, you have everything, all the minerals which are there. Probably we have a good uh, reserves of uranium also. And we were wondering, that why do we have to bend in front of foreign uh, countries when we sign agreements, where our sovereignty or our national interests are uh, kept at low? I was bit worried that this country, which has given Brahma Bhats and Palinis and all the principles of uh, this thing, we personally believe that modern science uh, has a lot of roots here in India, uh, be the spiritual science or the yogic science. Why is that in the last 100 years or 150 years, we started copying the innovations in the West. Why we could not add up to what the West did and make this world a better place to live? And this needed a strong man who can take decision. See, what is different between Mr. Modi and anybody else? Mr. Modi does not have uh, more intelligence than what you have. He does not have uh, additional hands like anybody else's. He is a common man. Only thing which he has is he has strong decision making. Uh, intuition or what you say, he takes decisions, A, B, he works 24 by 7 uh, to make this place a better place to live. And this uh, which we felt, what we did in social media team is just to, we communicated the same thing to the outside world. So what was happening within the cabins of my office, 11 Ashoka, I shared it with Abhijit. One day I came to Bangalore, I met Abhijit and I said, Abhijit, ye karna hai. we have to do this thing. And he gives, gave me a simple mantra. He said, Samvad, Su Samvad, Satat Sampao Samvad, which means, he said, communication, good communication and constant communication. And it struck me. So when I went back and I talked, said, Ki, uh, Mr. Gadkar is one of the important. I said, Ki, Nitinji, uh, I met a friend of mine who said that Ki, the people in the politics don't communicate. And he gave me a mantra. Uh, called as Samvad, Su Samvad and Satat Samvad, which is communication, good communication, constant communication. Constant communication. He said, I'm and then we went to Mr. Modi and said, Ki, we should. And he said, Ki, yes, we should. And we started communicating on Twitters and Facebooks continuously. And that paid uh, to us. I think that was the rich dividend where we started telling them Ki, what I'm doing today. So anybody in this uh, room wants to know what I am doing, what Mr. Nitin Gadkari, one of the ministers is doing, Mr. Modi is doing, or for that matter, Mr. Javadekar, a minister is doing, he need not wonder, he can just go to their handles and see. So this brings transparency, accountability. What do you say about that? There's something very important here that I would like to add. Uh, in the earlier governments, the media was just the main party that actually starts disseminating what the government does to the masses. In this government, it's ironical that media is just one more small participant within the entire ocean of people who gets to know from the government directly as to what they're doing. Now you can actually counter this by saying, will the government say something wrong and then actually spread that across? 
but people are going to people are going to talk back to the government because it's a two way medium it is not a one way medium it is not a tv or a print actually so what the government does it puts it directly out online basically for instance i have i have never seen a prime minister being active on twitter okay forget active on twitter i have never seen a prime minister actually uh, drumming something from japan because he was there and he actually did something and posted a photograph he is just behaving like you and me like a common person he is equally excited by being there as a person there and he just that he actually does something very impromptu and actually posts a video and a photo there i never seen any prime minister any chief minister in india ever doing anything as personal as so, that so in other words he just appear he used social media to appear as a man of the people as a normal man like you and me mm -hmm. and that's a huge connect for people that's one and i think he mentioned that he actually works 24 bar 7 the last cabinet reshuffle that happened happened on a sunday it was a sunday where the entire country was enjoying and watching movies and this man actually chose that sunday to do a cabinet reshuffle obviously the media guys were very pissed saying oh my god i have to waste my sunday not watch a movie and cover this sure. important thing he chose a sunday he could have he could have easily chosen a weekday on that because i will work only on a weekday but he didn't do that he chose a sunday to it in fact if i add Uh, when we used to discuss if you remember the, the, i can actually uh, confess something here we have meetings at 5:30 in the morning <laughs> so i don't know how many people would believe this but i get appointments at 5:30 and devender and i have talked at what 1 o'clock in the morning because there is a con call and he says 1 a.m. and then you start scratching their case hota kabhi mis but 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 should that i mean should that be a surprise to anybody you know a a good friend of mine is Obama's chief of staff and he's in the office every morning at the White House at 4 o'clock and I would expect that of of the president of the US but I think I would also expect that of the prime minister of India personally yeah. it's a huge surprise in India because in India government means slow you uh, ask anybody outside governments mean sleepy and slow okay this is so very it's, very it's, different you're you're laughing here is that is that true i mean are we changing the 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 definition of what government is <coughs> yeah, definitely so uh, uh so in uh, so my wife is a government employee and she used to go to office let's say uh, 10 am in the morning and come back by 4 but now after modi mr modi has introduced a new norm working norms like timing are strict so she has to reach there by 5 she has to leave by 5 uh, by 9 and reach home by 5:30 so 8 and a half hours she has to spend and and this for all government employees there is finger uh, print uh, biometric system with which they have to get in and then they get Correct out uh, uh, yeah. from the office and and they have made uh, uh, mr modi has made the life of the government employees very tough <laughs> in india so, so yeah. he's, he's making them earn their money <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i personally feel that uh, uh, we indians have very good talent a good talent a very good talent and since here so if you see the, the, average indian if you see is a sincere guy is an honest person yes. you walk across any uh, um, and they have bright ideas uh, only thing is what happened probably in decades is that somewhere the dust started collecting what we have done is very simple with this uh, force of social media or so we started removing this dust so if you ask me have we done anything new what was not known to indians honestly uh, whenever i and uh, devender or anybody in my team when they sit and we try to scratch it ki what have we done new so we have not done anything new uh, what we basically did is we just uh, removed that dust kind of thing we started talking so when we went to people in 2012 uh, we started asking them what kind of prime minister do you want what kind of uh, uh, legislative assembly member or a parliamentary member do you want so when you said that ki we we went into the form of presidential election even if it appears that we never talked about national issues at such length where actually we spoke about local issues see a citizen is more concerned about his local issues issues which matters to him day to day we talked about that but with what we did is we had dwell edge one we talked about the transactional the impact of the local issues and also the policies about it let me ask you this then let's let's pick up on that and, and talk about how the government is responding to what the entire world is talking about right now and that's these 11 women who died um in this sterilization program. I mean, that has gotten headlines all over the world. So, what is the government doing? How is the government using social media, for example, to address that disaster? 
See, this is very unfortunate that we could see this kind of disaster yesterday what happened. The first thing what we did is, probably this is the first time where the Prime Minister called up uh, from outside country, he Australia. was in Rangoon, and, uh, Rangoon, yeah. Rangoon that time and he called up. Not only called up the CM also talked to the health secretary and everybody. And we have come out openly and we have not talked about anything which is called up trying to save the face. We admitted that uh, this is something which is not to happen, uh, we are ashamed of it. Now I cannot use anything else than that. But what we did is immediately we said ki we will have an introspection what this happened. And you could see the actions. The medical officers were suspended there, now, there is an FIR which has happened, precautions have been taken and immediately we see uh, the health ministry has taken cognizance of this, they have started talking about this in social media and started talking about uh, what is the problem. See we do not do vacastomy or tubectomy in a country like ours, uh, we will have several other problems. So somebody 20 years back gave us a solution that said that we incentivize that. So we incentivized uh, the person who goes through this procedure, we incentivized the social uh, medical officer there, the uh, medical officers, the governmental officers and probably the incentive became the evil. Now this is a time we will rethink about this. And here if you see yesterday's data analytics, uh, it is long because people while they are criticizing the incidents, the individual, they also have come up with ideas and how we can actually uh, save this kind of incidents in future to happen. Let, let me ask you to so it is a learning process for us. I, is it possible to predict how the government is going to react to something like this? I mean could you have told me two days ago how the government would react to this story? Well, I think it's very, very difficult. Uh, like all the, let's say, uh, talking that okay, uh, that we were trying to engage and uh, doing a dialogue on social media, that is easy. But if you look at, uh, uh, there is something called uh, uh, average engagement rate, let's say on Facebook, whereby let's say you post something, uh, let's say Pr Prime Minister Modi has 20 mi 22 million fans over there, and let's say he posts something and uh, how many people like it, share it or respond to it. If you look at the, uh, divide this number by the total number of fans, the en average engagement rate you get. So that's only 0.15%. So not many people care about it. And let's say even if people care, people comment on it, people share on it. Now, who is in the agency side or who in the government side is watching all those feed of comments? Who is taking action on those? Do, we, do the government has that many resources? Now Mr. Modi is there uh, as, as the senior political candidate, but we have so many 543 other political candidates. How many of them have Facebook accounts? How many of them have Twitter accounts? How many of them are getting suggestions? How many of them have workforce to uh, uh, work on those suggestions? So, so it is very, very challenging. It is easier said than done, but it is the start which has happened. So, uh, so Mr. Modi has given a start and I think other politicians will also follow and, and they start uh, building a new kind of workforce like IBM lady said that uh, we have to redesign. So they, they get a new workforce uh, which works on all these uh, suggestions. Then, then there are things will change. I will give an example how we used uh, this medium uh, to save lives. A couple of weeks back we saw a cyclone coming and hitting uh, the eastern southern eastern uh, part of Andhra India, Pradesh. this is Andhra Pradesh, the Vizag, uh, this thing, the coastal Andhra Pradesh and Vizag. This kind of data has been rec received by the environment ministry or the disaster management ministry earlier also and we used to communicate through newspapers and TV channels. Here what happened is the newspaper comes the next day, we would have lost that critical 17, 18 hours of communication. But the moment this kind of things came up. Uh, we started communicating this through our informal channels and this is the cyclone which is going to come, this is the epicenter, this is the hit area. And you could say that a lot of lives were saved because people migrated from that area. So we had only loss of property which can be rebuilt. See loss of property is also loss but at least the human beings could be saved. The same thing we could use as a disaster management thing. Two, the real time analysis I will say is the peak load factor. We were just talking before this session is that we have a crunch of energy and uh, we unfortunately suffer electricity uh, down, uh, uh, what is it, load shedding. So we were just talking about, with, I was talking to a couple of entrepreneurs sitting outside and they said Ki, we start social media, local circles and talk about how we can have peak load this thing. Ki, there is a load shedding in this area, so now this one hour nobody will start their geyser or their air conditioners or heaters and this load can be you know used Balanced for out. some emergency purposes like hospitals or 
uh, educational uh, institutes or at least a small light in the shanty of the house. People have started thinking about this and uh, probably what is the role of a prime minister or a political party is not to do everything by itself. If we do everything by itself, we will be a communist government. That's not the idea. We are more of a balanced social sovereignty, which we would like to have. Uh, we would like to have minimum governance, uh, minimum uh, interference. We would not minimum take governance. Minimum government. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, that sounds a, like a friend yeah, of George yeah. Bush. So, uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> we can go into that, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So, uh, the whole idea is to initiate this. And when people talk about this kind of uh, initiatives like uh, sharing data and how we can save this. I think we have made our mark where people have been educated and they have started creating that use of the social media. So mm -hmm. it is not purely to put my photographs and say, hey, see, I'm my wife and my kid uh, on a holiday destination. But we start talking about ideas and this cumulative wisdom, the uh, accumulated wisdom probably make my country a better place to live than it was earlier. I would like yeah, to add something sure. on that basically. Uh, so I completely agree with what he's saying. But for instance, I'll, I'll give you an, I'll give you a practical example of uh, a flat or an apartment complex. If you have an apartment complex, you have person heading that apartment complex and everybody living in it and etc. Now, if you have a Facebook group for the apartment complex to share ideas and etc. There is a role for people to share ideas because it is free and it is very easy to share ideas. There is a role for that. There is a team that has to look at all those ideas and start executing what is right for everybody together. Similarly, it is very easy for me to tweet saying, hey, Mr. Modi, please do this. But that is not enough. I need to take a stand outside and make sure that this idea is sold sold to the right people so that it gets executed. It has to be executed. It's not easy, I mean, it's not easy to get ideas executed on a large scale. But you also have someone, to convince people. you also have someone, if they're monitoring um, that Facebook page, you have, exactly. you have gatekeepers, right? You exactly. have people filtering. Exactly, but, this, but, but the point I'm trying to make is that as people, we can easily share ideas because it's free. Sure. Plus it doesn't cost anything at all and everybody's sharing ideas. And this is probably the first time people are having an open and free channel to share ideas. Okay. Now, obviously, when we start sharing more and more ideas, it will actually go to the government saying, this is the large trend of those ideas that are coming for this particular topic, mm -hmm. going beyond specific accidents or, or things like natural calamity, etc. Mm -hmm. And then it actually gets executed. The point is that we as citizens can easily share ideas because it's easy for us. But there is, that there is somebody who is actually taking cognizance of all those ideas, making sense of them, what works, what doesn't work, that's what actually gives people the confidence saying, yes, I can continue to share ideas. L let's ask people in the audience, how many people here have used social media to communicate with their lawmakers, with the government? Okay, it's not as, not, maybe like 25, 30%. How many people um, have gotten an answer? That's very few. I can actually give you an interesting idea. Yeah, I'll give you. I'll give you two ideas. Uh, I'll answer. I'll give you the point, is, the point yeah, yeah. is, these people here are saying yeah. that, you know, they So the easiest idea I can give you, yeah. there are actually many local police departments having accounts on Twitter and Facebook. So if I have a problem with somebody who's driving rashly in Bangalore or is parked somewhere like, a, like, a, like an idiot, I can just take a photograph and actually share it with the local Bangalore police commissioner. Mm -hmm. And there is a response on Facebook because the thing is that I'm not trying to call him up and trying to wait and saying, is he going to pick up the phone or not, I am spending my two minutes of my time putting it and forgetting all about it. If it's a call, it's real time. I need to wait till somebody picks up. I need to communicate. I need to go and give a photograph and prove and it's going to be pain for me. But on Facebook, it is a passive thing that I do. I take a photograph and post it saying, could you please action it? I know, I know it's passive, which is why I'm doing it. Right. If it's active, I won't do it, obviously. That's, that's what people are trying. But there is a response on Facebook. He comes and says, yes, there is an action taken on this guy. Here mm -hmm. is his number, etc. That happens. And probably the two people who got a response probably are talking about that. You had some so, ideas. I'll just tell you. See, the first step sure. uh, towards going to uh, Mars or Moon or anywhere else in the frontier was somebody thinking about taking the first step. Right. Uh, and I'm sure in the first step, right. they would not have been successful. So there would have been thousands of failed attempts uh, where now we see that human being can actually go to other planets and uh, we can do a lot of space. I think in a country like India where uh, cognizance of a common citizen was not that strong in political circuits or policy makers, at least the first step has been taken. 
there is a platform to communicate with the policy makers, the lawmakers, the government, the political party. The second step, whether they are hearing or not. So there is a saying in Hindi, it means that you should pick up a stone and throw it up so high with determination that even the skies can tear up. So people have started doing this. Their first step has been taken. Second is when three people raise their hands and they have communication and answers from the government. I'm really happy because this has happened. And once this happens, this three will become 3% and tomorrow 30% and maybe 100% one day. So this has started and I'm happy that this hap happened in my lifetime. So are you as, are you as optimistic, Jitendra? That, I mean, he's saying basically it's kind of like a snowball effect. The more people who get answers, the more ex expectations. Yeah. yeah, this is what I shared that the response rate, which is like, let's say somebody posts onto your Facebook page and you respond to it, that response rates are very, very less right now. I told you it's 0.15%. So uh, within 1,000, let's say two or three get responses. Now, how those response rates are going to get improved? You have to hire additional workforce. Now, government has, is not hiring additional workforce. So how those are going to address? So there are a lot of execution challenges. Indeed, social media is a, uh, as a channel, it is very young and it, it provides you uh, the platform to engage with your citizens. But you have to think beyond that, you have to think that how I am going to, uh, what is my engagement strategy? That strategy, uh, you have to execute on that. And, and uh, I want to share a couple of statistics here. In 2010, so I, I developed this uh, Asia Pacific social media forecast and in 2010 in India only 23 million users uh, uh, were using social media. And in 2013, this has grown nearly four times. So which is 100 million right now. Okay, and in two th by 2019, Forrester expects that 450 million internet users, which is 45 crores, which is 4.5 times than the current. So, in the next five years, with so many social media users coming online, now the, all the political parties will <coughs> have to have strong social media strategies, not only for marketing but for the engagement as well. Is there like a codex for social media for for political parties that should be written? Or definitely, definitely. I, I was searching on the Google on the kind of guidebook or a response guide for uh, social media which politicians use across the world. Only I could find uh, one or two instances in Australia, but I could not find them anywhere. So it is, I told you, it's a very young platform. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, less than five years old. And so uh, rules are still being written and people should uh, focus more and more uh, writing their own rules and guidebooks and response guides. And this is how they should respond. Okay. A question from the audience, because um, we're going into 40 minutes, we're going to have to wrap up fairly soon. Any questions? Um, how about a flash poll? How many people here think that social media is going to make India's democracy work better? Ah, so unanimous. Very good. Let's, um, let's wrap things up. Let me ask all of you maybe for a final word on where do you see um, social media in politics going forward. Maybe if you could look to the next five years. How, how are things going to look? How are things going to change? So it's going to make my, my life difficult. Yeah. So earlier, because once the elections were over, I could actually take some time off for the family. Now, <laughs> now the moment the voting is over. One good part is that kid, earlier we used to have this media. So what you, you said a few minutes back, I'm trying to pick up this. Yeah. Uh, you will have to understand, I'll just, just take two minutes to explain. Sure. Earlier the dialogues used to be, the leaders used to come on the stage and speak. If people clap, it was accepted, from the understood that it has been accepted and that becomes the punchline for the political party. There was only one way to communicate. Then came this uh, something in India which is called as electronics media and we being a young uh, democracy and then very young into that liberalization, just 91, 1991 we had this liberalization. So we had this system from one to many, uh, migrated from one to many to one to one to many. So the politician tells it to the anchor, the anchor then tells to the world. And then few people would tell that the country wants to know and you know, all that started happening. <laughs> and uh, he could actually interpret and say what he wanted to say and force words in my mouth. And I was quite helpless for the last uh, five, six, seven years or say maybe one decade. Because actually I was not knowing that whether I am the politician or he is playing politics with me. So the politicians were victim of the politics played by the media. Social media actually gave me a voice. And I said I don't want him. So I say one too many, too many. And the moment I talk to many, 
they are not dumbs. They are not one-way communication. It's not a TV set, television set, where the anchor speaks and everybody is forced to listen. It's a live media. They immediately respond. And if I speak something good, they encourage me. If I speak something which is not good for the society, they woo me down. And it is public. Understand one thing. If something goes wrong in this room, only 200 people will know about it. But if it goes wrong on social media, then the, whole world knows the entire world knows it and knows it for the eternity. Right. So it's not only one incidence of one day. It's uh, there for my entire life. Yeah. So what has happened is, now I have become conscious. And I do my homework before I go out. And I think in a political circle, this one particular thing itself is good for a country like India, where the politicians started speaking. See, the entire, if you see this rail, uh, uh, which is there, the entire, uh, this thing, the bogies were in place, the bureaucracy was in place, the administration in the place, there is judiciary which is there. What was going wrong is the engine. The only 543 people who get elected in our House of Commons, which is Lok Sabha. Now that engine has become very vibrant. It's not making noise, it's actually moving. And what you see there's a noise is the motion noise. It's running at a very high speed. And probably that will take all the bogies along. So what I see this social media has to be the engine which will keep us on toes. And I'm sure uh, we have reduced the ages, uh, the age group of the politicians. Earlier we used to see Indian Prime Ministers in the League of 70s. Uh, now we have to come to 60s and two years to come we will have younger prime ministers, younger representatives in the house and that will benefit us. So two, three, two things, one is the instant communication, two-way communication, engagement, involvement and third is nobody will take your drama now, they, they know what is going on and that will keep the politicians on their toe. So I think the days to come will be good because of social media. Okay. So I think we have already started looking at politics as a brand. You are answerable to people is what the brand classically understands saying if you screw up, you will fail in the market is the brand's philosophy and brand continuously has to keep talking to people, keeping them happy. But that's how we are also starting to look at politics and not just as a welfare measure or welfare group, but as a positive brand that actually needs to keep talking to people all the time. The second thing is which is, which is already in motion is that he actually spoke about one to many and everything. I think we are truly in a many to many spectrum. When somebody like Mr. Modi tweets, it's not him tweeting from a podium because when he tweets, the whole world actually takes the tweet and actually has a big discussion on it on Twitter. So he is actually part of the group and everybody is talking about it. It's like a classic brand. So the world is flat. It's flat, complete. So it's like a brand. A brand says something. Brand doesn't talk on a podium. Earlier it used to talk on a podium. I mean, it still talks on a podium via television because you can talk back to the television. But these days, a TVC appears on TV and it's being discussed more on Twitter than on TV at all. And the thing right. is that earlier also people used to discuss about the TVC. But, I mean, you, everybody here, everybody sounds so upbeat about social media. I wonder, do, I, mean, I know we're running out of time, but do, do we ever... Do you ever worry about all this data mining and that poli politicians will start finding out what each citizen thinks and likes and wants and give him or her exactly what he wants? And when that happens, there's not going to be a competition of ideas anymore. You're going to feed people what they want, give them what they want, because you already know what they want. I'm going to let him touch that because we're going to have to wrap it up. So, uh, so. Uh, just, just talking about like my predictions for the social media and politics, what I think is that uh, right now if we look at the numbers, I'm a numbers guy, so, uh, so Narendra Modi has 22 million fans, after that the second one is Arvind Kejriwal from Aam Aadmi Party is 5, and 5 million and the third is Rajnath Singh which is like 2 million and you don't see out of 543 politicians who are there in Lok Sabha, uh, you don't see many politicians even having more than 1 million fans on Facebook. So, so my first prediction is that, that not only all the national parties but all the regional parties will go aggressively on the social media. Why? Because the number of social media users are going to grow from 10 million, 100 million to 450 million. Second, there's a lot of younger demographics. If you look at the demographics of the social media users, 90% of the users are between 13 to 34 years of age. So these people, the politicians can't afford to ignore because these are the younger uh, population and they tend to influence uh, the voters of the older population as well. So, uh, and more and more older generation is also going to join social media. So, so this is going to happen. Second, uh, I also predict that, that 
advertising spent right now, if you, uh, if you have observed India elections, a lot of advertising spending was done on newspapers and uh, television. Newspaper is the most dominant uh, more, uh, medium of uh, advertising spending with 45% of share and uh, television has 37% of share. Now internet total is around only 7% of share of the total advertising spending and BJP and uh, they spend aggressively on the uh, newspaper and television. What I predict is that by in the next five years, they are going to uh, shift their spend from these offline media to online as well as the social media. So social media advertising spending, I predict that is going to grow eightfold because they can't afford to ignore all these 450 million people who are going to be there on the next five years over social media. Gentlemen, we've run out of time. We could talk for hours about this and I bet you everyone here could too. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Sure. We, um, we have another podium discussion that's going to take place right here, so give us like two minutes to change and we're going to start again. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Very thank much. you. You great guys meeting. are great. You guys are great. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.